Hi and welcome into Burner. Today we're going to make bread in the style of the ancient Egyptians. Oh dear. Okay, we need to clear some things up. Firstly, this post was not something ancient Egyptians did. The infamous Egyptian walk is a misconception based on the way people are displayed on two-dimensional Egyptian art, which aim to show as much of the human form as possible. The pose is not seen in Egyptian statues because being 3D removed the need for this pose. It's also just a little bit obnoxious. We know this isn't food related, but it is important to make these things clear, as Egypt is not a unified concept in history. For the purposes of today's video, when we refer to Egypt or Egyptians, we are referring to the Old, Middle and New Kingdoms, an era spanning from 2700 to roughly 1100 before the Common Era. That's a whopping 1,600 years. Suffice to say, we are doing some generalization. It is important to point out that we are not including Ptolemaic or anything from the current common era. This is important to clear up, as there is a modern day Egypt which we are not covering today. With all that out of the way, let's get cooking. Firstly, we have to make our starter. For this, we will need a culture. If you don't have one, check out our video in the description. We're going to make this one more emmer based. Egyptians still used a lot of barley, but were more reliant on emmer flour. Emmer wheat is also called faro. So this is like pharaoh faro. <laughs> First, we prepped our starter with 50 grams of emma flour, then 50 milliliters of water. Then we left that overnight. This will create more than we'll need, but that's fine. Let this sit for a night. When it's nice and bubbly, we can make dough. Take 365 milliliters of water and mix in roughly 85 grams of your starter. Mix up a bit and then add 500 grams of emma flour. Feel free to swap some of this for barley if you like this flavor. Give it all a good mix. Once it looks well mixed, let it all rest for 30 minutes. In the meantime, dissolve 10 grams of salt in 10 milliliters of water. After 30 minutes, add in the salted water. Now start kneading and knead it well. As we know, Emma doesn't have a lot of gluten, so you will be doing quite a bit of work here. Knead it until the ball looks dry and all the water is incorporated. After you've kneaded it, wait six hours. We are trying to recreate the environment of ancient Egypt here, so try and find a nice warm spot. We are opting for a classic, the oven with the light on. Use the time in between to research photo videos and come up with some ideas. After six or so hours, you should have a nice poofy ball of <laughs> ferro faro dough. <laughs> now, put it in the desired shape, which, given the lack of gluten, will be flatbread again, we guess. Now, give them a fry on a hot surface, ideally clay. Alternatively, you can also put them in your oven on a hot stone or steel. Yeah, go on. Tuck in. How is it? Good? Lovely. We should probably recommend that people have this with goat's cheese or something like that. Yeah, I'm all right. It's just, it's just, it's just another boring flatbread. There has to be something better. I refuse to believe that for thousands of years, no human figured out how to make properly leavened bread. This civilization conquered the known world and built this, this and this. It just doesn't add up. Oh, oh, don't bother. We have to get ready for the next episode, which will probably be another flatbread. But, but yes, yes, maybe this can be helped with science. Yes, we know the old adage. Emma is too low in gluten, so it can't properly rise. So you can only make flatbread with it. Now, we love us some flatbread here, but we refuse to believe that a civilization that spanned over a thousand years never cracked properly leavened bread. We know it won't be easy, but we are adamant that we can find a way. Let's check back in with our human. Oh, he seems to be hard at work with his groundbreaking research into the issue at hand. We are sure he'll be fine and that all is well in hand. And? Any results? Lovely, let's see them. Uh -huh. a, a, a planter? Okay, that's 
unexpected, but actually this could work. Adeline Batts recreated an Egyptian bread baking process using clay moulds. Like that one. Here the moulds were fired at a heat between 850 and 950 Celsius. The moulds contain clay, fine gravel and, oh, oh dear, fresh donkey dung. Let's take the flower pots. Before we use these pots, we will have to treat them. Just give them a coating with oil. We are using rapeseed, but you can use any type with a high smoke point. Once they've been nicely coated, put them into a 180 degree oven. If you have an extractor fan, turn it on and make sure your kitchen is well ventilated because this will get smoky. Carefully take the pots out of the oven and let them cool down. The article uses einkorn starter, but that shouldn't make much difference. However, we are going to use these ratios in half the quantities. Oh, will you look at this? This makes the recipe for the dough exactly the same as the one we did earlier for the flatbread. It's almost as if this was planned in advance. So, make another ball like you just did. Bum, 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 done. After you've added the salt and kneaded it to the point where the dough looks dry, cut the ball into halves. Make sure to line the pots with baking paper. Here we did one with and one without to see if it was really required. We'll get back to that. Pop it in and done. Just cover them and wait for six hours. We are very hopeful about this as the article shows a very promising crumb. And from the outside, it looks a bit like a log of something else. Well, maybe that's the donkey done. After five hours of proofing, preheat your oven to its maximum temperature. After one hour of preheating, pop your pots in the oven and leave them in there for 20 minutes. Then turn down the heat to 200 degrees Celsius and leave the pots in there for another 20 minutes before removing them from the oven. Who told you Emma flour wouldn't rise? Look at those glorious muffins of Faro Faro. After they've cooled, you can cut in. And we think that's crumb. Admittedly, not a modern bloomer, but far from shabby. The crumb is still pretty cakey, but there are clearly air pockets. Flavor-wise, we are getting really close. The Emma flour provides a very flavorful bread. Now, what happened to that pot which wasn't lined with baking paper? It genuinely fused with the pot. There was no way we could get it out, and we tried. We ended up having to scoop it out and the crust, once scooped out, had a distinct clay taste. We must admit these pots have just served as old-fashioned stand-ins for loaf tins. We might need to get a bit more advanced if we want to do this right. The article on Batz's research tells us that the dough was put in hot molds and then left to cook at 100 degrees for about an hour. Let's try that by making a third dough the exact same way. Now we've made another ball of dough, but we're not going to put this into the molds yet. We are going to take a page out of the modern bread book. Sure. Just give the dough a stretch and fold every 30 minutes for six hours. We noticed that even though there is no comparison with modern day wheat, the Emma dough did get a teensy bit stretchy after a while. So give the dough a very gentle stretch. Yes, very gently, as this will still tear easily. After five hours, that's 10 folds, preheat your oven to maximum. We know that Adeline Batts left them at 100 degrees for an hour, but we tried that and Although the dough was cooked, it was still a bit wet. Our vessels, that's the planters, aren't as thick nor can we preheat them at 800 degrees. We will have to compensate for this lack of thermal mass by going hotter and faster. Unlike last time, have your planters in the oven as it preheats, so they heat up along with the oven for a full hour. We like to laugh here, but this is important. The next step is very tricky. If you're going to do this, make sure you have heat-proof gloves like these. Traditional oven mitts do not give you enough dexterity. Yeah, all right there, show off. Split your dough into two and shape them into two, well, logs. And make sure they're ready because the next steps have to go quickly. Get the pots out, again, watch out, they are ripping hot. 
so be very careful. But also hurry, because these lose their heat fast. That's better. Put the dough in, give it a tap down so it touches the sides and pop them back in the oven. Turn the heat down to 200, like before, for the last 20 minutes. Then, 20 minutes after that, you have yourself some bread. Let them cool down and then cut them open. And the crumb is still a bit dense. It's not as normal bready as Adeline Batz's log loaves, but it got pretty close. For now, this seems like a lovely recreation of some very old bread. Dry bread is, well, dry. So we're going to make a very simple and period appropriate topping. Quick garlic butter. Crush two cloves of garlic very finely. If you have a mortar and pestle, we strongly recommend using those, so you can turn the garlic into a paste. Then, add some salt, take some room temperature butter that's nice and malleable, and add it to the mortar. If you don't have a mortar, you can stir this all very vigorously in a bowl. And we have garlic butter. Leave it out if you like it soft, cool it if you prefer it a bit stiffer. Enjoy your ancient Egyptian sandwich of farro farro bread. This goes lovely next to a summer salad. Please go ahead and experiment and let us know what combinations you liked in the comments. We hope you enjoyed this video and, as always, we welcome constructive feedback in the comments below. We'll be back in two weeks with a bread from the Roman Empire. Thank you for watching.